Welcome to the IVM Podcast Network. IVM Likes is an IVM production and if you enjoy our show, do check out the On Course Podcast. If you're a student planning to study abroad and wondering how to go about it, hosts Akhil and Alisha have all the answers for you. From financing your education to decoding that application process, they cover it all on the On Course Podcast. Check it out. If you're a listener of IVM Likes and a Sox fan, which I'm sure is a Venn diagram that's totally possible, I have great news for you. You check out the Moja Club. They make amazing funky socks that you can buy on their website or even better, just get a subscription. Sign up for six months or a year and you'll get a pair delivered to your house every month. They'll even throw in a free pair at the end of the month. And if you go to their website, themojaclub.in right now, you get a whole 33% off by just applying the code IVM Likes. It's IVM Likes with no spaces. 33% off. Did you hear that? Themojaclub.in. Hey guys, this is IBM Likes, another edition. Sadly, Sharanya, our usual host, is not here today, but I am hosting it. My name is May, and I have a show on the IBM Podcast Network called Made in India, where I get indie artists to do studio sessions, and I interview them about stuffs. We've also got Naveen, who yeah. is uh, the producer of uh, various shows, like Cyrus Brocha's show, Cyrus Says, as well as Geek Fruit, and you have your own show called Keeping It Queer. That's right, plug up top. Plug, plug, plugs. And we have a very special guest he's practically an honorary like IVM member of sorts it's Peter honorary. Abraham hey thank you yes. pleasure to be here Yay. IVM the place I've never been to in so many of these last few days <laughs> <laughs> and it was only you recently I discovered Peter Abraham is not a musician I was thinking of Peter Gabriel on my while I knew Peter Gabriel and like, but that's that's a quite cool name I would it's say a, yeah it's yeah. a really good I'm, I'm liking it I'm a huge Peter Gabriel fan yeah. so well both done. of you have cool names I'm so jealous because yeah. <laughs> Narveen Norona is not yeah, cool enough it's not cool enough it doesn't, doesn't get the attraction it yeah, doesn't get the skirts the skirts up. <laughs> <laughs> like I would want to like you'd want the skirts um, so yeah so as usual our IVM likes where we recommend a TV show a film and a book and later on in the episode we're going to be uh, basically telling you about feel good things that you go back to stuff that you love that you don't really do or listen to or watch or eat or whatever it is and then you go back to it because you miss it so firstly um, we're going to throw this down to Naveen who's going to recommend a film today yes uh, this is a great movie I, I always start my sentences with like whatever I'm recommending is great so just go for it of course it's about what stuff you like it's <laughs> no, gotta be no, great so it's, it's, it's because I never really knew about this movie until I started researching LGBT movies and movies based on mm. uh, uh, characters which are not the regular stereotype guy falling in love with a girl you know so uh, I came across this movie and what surprised me was the cast first of all because mm-hmm. it has Guy Pierce, Hugo Weaving and Terrence Stamp whoa that's and uh... Guy Pierce and Hugo Weaving in the movie are drag queens and Terrence Stamp is a transgender. And they are, like fun They have their own cabaret show and they go around on a bus called Priscilla traveling across the, the Australian outback. So the movie is called The Adventures of Priscilla, The Queen of the Desert. And, I uh, like it. I want to be at this party. Yeah, and, and the movie is just like this amazing, like you get to see the the, sca- the whole scope of Australia and you see homophobia, you see friendliness, you see different, so there's also great music in use because it's the 80s. They use a lot of cabaret music, they use, use a lot of nice. Madonna, Gloria Gaynor and stuff like yeah. that. So a very lively... The, 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 yeah, the champions of... of, of uh, yeah, the 80s. Yeah. So... The music and the, the way the movie is shot and the way these actors bring out the best. You go waving as a as a drag queen, I would never imagine that. No, and after, then I saw it for yeah. and Guy Pierce, man. Guy Pierce actually sells himself like as a girl in in a, in a scene where he goes to uh, get drinks and these these hillbillies from Australia come to flirt with him and he's like, yeah, what what's a girl got to do to get a drink around here and stuff like that. And, <laughs> and it's only when he raises his hand to do a cheers, then they realize that he has muscles and all. So then they start like bullying him and then like Terrence Stamp comes in. And does a very badass scene so it's just like they fight homophobia in their own way but these are like essentially the characters two drag queens and a transgender on a road trip and uh, I, what a I just, fun road trip man can yeah. missing out on life? and so somebody asks them in the movie what do you all do for a living what kind of cabaret do you do and she, Guy Pierce again says we dress up in women's clothes and parade around mouthing other people's songs <laughs> <laughs> and that is like that sums the movie up it's just outlandish it's fun and it's also serious in a way Okay. Because all three of them have histories as well. But this was actually sort of, this movie was actually one of the big highlights of that particular decade because mm. um, 
You've seen it? Almost, it? I haven't seen the entire movie. Okay. But uh, I, I was really too young at that point in time, so uh, I'm still quite young, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, love but like, it was, I love that, like, next to Naveen, Peter and I sound like, <laughs> like full-on voiceover artists doing this entire show. Yep. <laughs> but it was, and uh, obviously at that point, because I was so young, the concept of LGBT and, you know, the, the lifestyle that people, like, they lead mm-hmm. uh, was something that was very new to a young Indian boy at that point in time. So this movie was a pretty uh, big eye-opener, I think, not just for me, but for a lot of people at that point yeah. who weren't really exposed uh, to the fact that, you know, there's a whole different set of people who are also out there sharing planet Earth. Yeah, yeah and yeah. they're and they're, no bones about it. They're like out there in the open putting themselves... I mean, it's a road trip, but it's also them and that show. Yeah. Right? It's really fun. And it's yeah. a lot of fun because the way they do it, they dress up, they jazz up, they are wearing these exuberant costumes yeah. and there's an entire song uh, choreography to like them just standing on the bus. There's a desert mm-hmm. and there's just wide shots of them just posing and then they are the dupattas or whatever. They're just yeah. flying in the air. It's so glorious. <laughs> it's just so much fun to watch this movie because it... it, it Celebrates life, no yeah, matter how you are. Yeah, it's liberating. Yeah, it's liberating, and the fact that you can go on the road and be yourself is what matters. That's. Mm. I mean, all you've, you you guys have probably seen Mad Max, the new Mad Max, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course. just imagine that scene in the desert where they're going mm. completely ballistic, buck, <laughs> you know, on the on the big machines and whatever. Yeah. This is a very fabulous. Yeah, uh, replace version drag of queens that. there and make yeah. it like. So, yeah, it's pretty fun. So it's like Mad Max, but with drag yeah, queens. Yeah, like the cast. <laughs> I like that description. <laughs> like the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> 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 Mad Max, something like that, yeah. I like it. It sounds like fun. What a good movie. Okay, so um, Peter, you're recommending a TV show to us today, right? Yeah, so obviously uh, the kind of TV that I've been watching over the last several years now mm-hmm. has been... Um, a long TV show. <laughs> has been a pretty long TV show. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I usually try and restrict myself to uh, shows which are sort of short in duration because I love to binge watch. So uh, for me, this particular show, which is called The Night Manager, was something that I came across uh, Mm -hmm. pretty late. I think uh, it's uh, more than a couple of years old, Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not wrong. And I just came to know about it last year. Uh, it's got Tom Hiddleston, who's mm-hmm. uh, you know fronting the show Loki. as the yeah the guy who plays Loki in the Avengers movies, yeah. and you've also got uh, uh, Hugh what's Laurie. his face Hugh Laurie, who's playing the protag- the uh, antagonist, mm. the villain of uh, the entire arms piece. Dealer, I guess. Yeah, so it's about international intrigue. I love spy uh, stuff. Nice. And, Espionage. You know, and yeah, genre. you know it's it's really cool, and the setting, which is in Europe, in Switzerland, whatever. Is is pretty cool. Uh, it's based on a book by uh, Jean Le Carre, I believe is the way to say it, right? Whom I call John Le Carre until the show. Le Carre. <laughs> Le Carre. He sounds like a kabadi wala who's yeah. like selling huge car parts or something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's based on this particular book. It's a six-part mini-series. I believe they are coming up with the second season. But it's just a really fun show. It it tends to get slightly draggy in parts, but I think overall. The setting, the acting, uh, the general pace of it all, uh, I enjoyed myself. I think but then, this is... Uh, I think the is, whole so idea of a miniseries is not to have seasons, right? Or yes, like, but uh, there is some talk about them trying to do a second... Uh, but with like different season, actors. Perhaps, yeah. Perhaps that is so the is there, case. So is there a closure to the first yes. season? Yeah, yes. I was going to ask you, why is it called okay. The Night Manager? So, uh, without giving too much away, uh, Tom Hiddleston is is this uh, former British soldier okay. who works as the night manager <laughs> in a hotel. Soldier with an accent, <laughs> <laughs> like soldier, soldier, <laughs> soldier. soldier. Okay, now oh, no. so cool. No, <laughs> yeah, just kill the cool of that. <laughs> <laughs> kill the cool. So uh, he's a former British soldier who's uh, working as a night manager in a hotel. And he comes across oh. uh, some intrigue about arms dealers and he gets roped in by the intelligence community to follow up and report back on the activities of oh, what's uh, happening the in character. that hotel. Yeah, of, uh, specifically of the character of Hugh Laurie who's staying in the hotel and he is, you know, involved in a lot of nefarious things mm-hmm. and they want to bring him down hard. And so he fits the bill and the profile of a guy who could give that kind of information uh, yeah. to them. Mm. So the whole show is about how the setup happens with this guy and 
there's just some really really good acting tom hiddleston mm-hmm. as loki i have to say he did a good job but it's a very fun silly kind of a character you know i mean that scene which everyone remembers where the hulk is going hulk smash on yeah. on yeah. loki yeah. Wow. so that's pretty much <laughs> that's slapstick you know yeah it's it's yeah. it's really in the funny space but here you know that that suaveness that this guy is capable mm. of and he's a good looking guy so you oh, know yeah. and he's wearing well cut suits yeah. and it's whatever you know the way he's nice another, another movie that tom middleton plays a serious character he plays a vampire i think it's called the last ones alive only the last ones left alive or something yeah, like that yeah. he has tilda swinton in it as well and they're both vampires and they look like vampires in well, real tilda life tilda swinton certainly does yeah so she's they, very yeah uh, so you know what there's something so unique about the way she looks she started out as a model like just like and, and it's always those people who look so different that end up getting getting yeah. Yeah. like robert carlyle for example again great oh, yeah. great really face great that is like what great doing face. yeah, yeah so so tom that. middleston and they play vampire lovers who have been in love for 2000 years or something and again a very serious role a very serious turn for him talk about a long relationship <laughs> <laughs> commitment guys can I have some distance <laughs> <laughs> yeah stay away so um, I am recommending a book and so the thing is I I read I'm a, a big voracious reader um, but there is a book that I'm recommending today that something I read quite some time ago it's called All the World's a Spittoon and nice. it's by a, a guy called Samit Sani and I was quite and still am quite obsessed with travel books because I feel like I can travel vicariously through them. Mm. The book kicks off with um, Samit Sani uh, saying, talking about the fact that the best time to travel is between jobs. So he's quit his job in London and was traveling back to India, but he decided to make a promise to himself where because he was traveling back to India, he decided that he would never end up stepping on a plane through this whole journey. So he'll take road, train, boat, anything else, but not step on a plane. And so it's split into six sections, the book, which is basically how he travels from London back to India. So it's Scandinavia, Russia, Mongolia, China, Tibet, Nepal, and then he lands up in Delhi. Nice. So the book, when you're reading it, isn't just about like crossing these distances or whatever. It's also about getting an idea of that local culture and social aspects of each place. And Every destination ends up being this new world of people and habits and rituals and culture. And uh, there's some really fun stuff in the book. For example, there's a club in Moscow called Hungry Duck, which is like a club that you've just like never experienced before in your life. Then he talks about the Trans-Siberian Railway, but it's not just about it being the longest rail line, but about like the locals and the tourists that he met and this like scenic like Lake Baikal region. Also, one of my favorite parts of the book and one of my favorite destinations is a place that I would have never have thought would be very touristy, which is Mongolia. Oh, yeah. And it still has um, aspects of being an ancient nomadic state. Hmm. And there are herdsmen and horses. And I also and discovered... Yurts. yurts. And also <laughs> I discovered that um, yak's milk is a really deep part of their cuisine. Yeah. And, it's um, supposed to be the best kind of milk as well. In yeah, world. it's very yeah. nutritious, whatever. So I didn't know anything about yak milk till I read this book. Um, also, the Mongolians have a tradition of welcoming strangers into their home and like doing everything in their capacity to make it comfortable for you. There's also... Um, a market called the Ulan Bator, which is the black market. It's like an illegal market, um, which is should be on your to-do list when you swing by Mongolia and stuff. Sure, next time. I'm and there, yeah. yeah, when you're there, you just go over to... <laughs> and there is uh, a right. <laughs> 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 so they even have this thing of like being pickpocketed at that market is become a tradition more so than a crime now so it's like it's, it's a lot of stuff that he talks about in the book that's really fun there actually is even one incident in the book where he nearly has to get on a plane because the visa that he has so he's in a lot of places transit because you're taking the road right mm. and the visa doesn't cover this like one tiny town or village or something and he literally has to beg the officers to allow him to travel by any other route but a plane and he ends up taking like a hovercraft over a frozen lake or wow. something like that. It was really oh, nice. nice. That sounds like fun. So, um, I also have a really interesting story about this book, which is that I have this funny feeling this is the only book he's ever written. I don't know about any other book the Summit Sony has written. He wrote this one book and that was it. And I actually lost the book as you do when you recommend it to a friend mm. and they borrow it and they never return it. 
and that I, needs to be stopped that definitely I know, needs to be stopped return curved. books people god or don't give it to people i stop like i don't do a book exchange unless like he's giving me something else which mm. is nice and like i know that i shouldn't be this matters. glorified librarian okay, <laughs> yeah yeah i'm basically a librarian is giving me a book i was very bad deal when i gave my life of pi instead of white tiger now i have white tiger and my life of pi is gone Aww. i'm like not even a hard cover dude what the What the hell? So you know what? I was because I'd lost the book. I was actually willing to invest in a new one because I really wanted to read it again. Maybe take notes, like mm. if I plan a future trip. But you still have enough notes right now. As well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a little bit. Synopsis. How old is this book? Um, I'm actually not sure. I'll have to find that out. I can't remember how old it was, but I read it like I don't know in the 2000s. That's when oh, I had found out the old. book. So, um, for. a couple of years i actually um was trying to intermittently of course try to get a hold of it my brother was pretty obsessed and it made it his mission as well to find this book and we even contacted the publishers and found out it was not in print so i don't know how but i found out that somit sony had basically moved kitten caboodle to andaman and nicobar islands and started a resort there on havelock and so i somehow found him on facebook and i messaged him and i told him all this whole story about how much i loved his book and i wanted to get a hold of it again but i can't because the publishers aren't printing it anymore And I myself lived in in Port Blair for a couple of months before I went to boarding school. So I was like, sort of like talking about, oh, you're in Havelock, you know, I love the blue seas of Jolly Boy and Neil Island and things <laughs> like that. So he actually rep- we we ended up replying like many months later. I actually thought that maybe he just never texts his mm-hmm. Facebook or something, but mm-hmm. he replied back saying, "Very happy to help. Immensely flattered that you like the book and will source a copy for you and send it." And he sent me a copy. So oh, cool! Beautiful. I Very know. Cool. So sweet story behind <laughs> nice. the book too, guys. Nice. So uh, recommendations for today. Okay. Our uh, Peter's TV show, uh, the Night Manager, a film. We'll have to read out the name of the film again. The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Excellent. And my book is All the Worlds of Spitoon by Samit Sony. The only copy is with May herself. Yeah, yeah I think so. Unless you go to <laughs> I'm Andaman, I'm lending it to no one. <laughs> Unless you're aware of the geography of Andaman, and you can just lie about anything. And like, yeah, I also live there. I love this. Whatever. What the blue sea. Thanks, yeah, guys. Jolly Roger. I'm just saying, there's a way around it. <laughs> so find, try to get him to just basically yeah, send everyone yeah, copies yeah. of his book. Many months later. <laughs> <laughs> Much later. Maybe so, we should be yeah. Samit Sony's publisher. Or just right put now. a message in a bottle and send it to the Andaman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one day <laughs> so those are our recommendations for today we'll be right back after this break to talk about stuff that makes us feel good rants crazy conversations absurd questions and everything in between cyrus says is the podcast where i <coughs> cyrus broja let loose and talk to interesting people from across different walks of life oh well people who are available actually not more than that catch new episodes every monday on itunes audio boom or the all new ivm podcast app happy listening but only for a few minutes Hey, we're back on this break. I'm with Peter and Naveen. Our next segment is um, basically try to pick weird things that we like to talk about generally, besides TV shows, films, and books. And um, today, our question is the feel-good things you go back to. It could be anything from music to chocolate to your grandma's house. Hmm. So, um, <laughs> Peter, what is your feel-good thing you like to go back to? Um, I guess music has always been the fallback in many of these instances. Mm, mine too. And since I'm like an '80s child, as far as my musical influences are concerned. I love listening to those bands of those times which were in that real pop fun <laughs> and like an overly saccharine you know love yeah, songs yeah, yeah. and top of the list is uh, you know spando ballads uh, oh, oh spando so, ballads and it just like everyone who hears the ha ha ha, 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 ha you see there you go it just you know this much is true that's right may and navin can be found here every week <laughs> <laughs> spinning out the tunes spando ballads i've watched that song With many a girls, waltz. Yes, to waltz. That song. Waltz to that. Waltz. I don't and think I've ever waltzed before. I feel like my uh, waltzing. These are behind you. Uh, no, I could waltz, <laughs> but I don't think I've ever waltzed. No, we should do one will after. Will you teach me to waltz? I will after this. So sweet. We'll play Spando Ballet and we'll. We waltz. <laughs> we shall do it's this. Meant to be. This is <laughs> what we do be. in our office. Yeah. We waltz to Spando Ballet. <laughs> so what's yours? Uh, what's your uh, feel-good thing you always come back to? Yeah. So in? I, as Peter said, music was the escape for him. I would also escape into something or the other. So mm-hmm. uh, when I was a kid, my mom would like be very busy around me, and she put me in front of the TV <laughs> and I would basically watch that. Yeah. So I remember on Doo Darshan the. I never got, got to watch the Disney Jungle Book, the one that came out in seventies. Really? Yeah. So I wow. got my first exposure. I have both the guys, copies. Guys, 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 <laughs> wait. Calm down. Calm too. down. So I got my exposure in terms of the Shinyan uh, Shingen 
Jungle Book, which was the anime version of that. Uh, like some uh, Japanese guy made the whole story in an animated form yeah. in Japanese style, yeah. and that was what Doordarshan would broadcast. So my mm-hmm. exposure to that was that, and that that whole show had the opening uh, song, Jungle Jungle, Baat Chali Hai, Pata Chala Hai, Chaddi Pen Ke Phool Kila Hai. Right. So that beca- in you Japanese, have no idea. Japanese, yeah, no, no, in Hindi. <laughs> what? Yeah. No way. Yeah. They so dubbed that, it. That, that too. Udit Narayan sang, sang sang it. Oh my Aditya god. Aditya Narayan when he was a kid. Yeah. Jungle, jungle, baat chali hai, pata chala hai. Yeah. Chaddi bin ke fool ki raha hai. There was a whole song was like a proper thing and that stayed in my head and I would keep going back to that. Like years after yeah, I discovered yeah. YouTube, they have all the episodes online. So I would... Go back. You can watch it online. Yeah, so it's and so cute and nice and it's like there was a nice red panda in it. So it's my that comfort thing red. to go back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And there they really like because the Jungle Book is a movie, right? So you don't yeah. really get to know the characters really well. But the the depth of what Rudyard Kipling wrote in terms of the Indian yeah. forest and everything you see in that show, where the wolf, nice. how they hunt as a pack, how they train Mowgli, how his whole arc with Sher Khan comes into practice. Yeah. And Sher Khan, by the way, in the Hindi version, was voiced by Nana Partekar himself. Really? No. I'm not even kidding. Wow. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, he'd be so great. Idris Elba hasn't got any shit on Nana Partikar, guys. I'm telling yeah. you, Nana Partikar is the best. And uh, so the, the the whole show itself is so nice to watch in general because it's it's kind of like you see the animation is okay, but then the whole fact that you get to grow up with Mowgli in a, in a real sense of the term. So that I love Mowgli and I go back to that. I all love the time. that. So for me, actually, the feel good things to go back to is just like Peter about music, because and this happened to me very recently. Uh, I met like an ex-colleague of mine I used to work with at uh, NA7 at OML and uh, we were talking about just music stuff and when I was I was in the UK for about six years and I went back to all these bands that I was obsessed with and I loved and were listening to from my college years when I was in the UK so bands like The Foles and Kaiser Chiefs and Kasabian and uh, The Yeah Yeah Yeahs and it was so nice because, like, I know everyone's just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I only know Spando Ballet. But these were, like, <laughs> some of the artists that I was and really... Chandi Bhenge Phool Ke. So these were the artists that I used to get really obsessed with because I was really into sort of not independent indie, but, like, indie rock, like, the the alternative rock indie rock scene, like, when I was in the UK. And so I, was listening, I basically went back to this entire collection of music that I forgot about a little mm, bit. Mm. And it just made me miss, like, my days in the UK because I used to be able to see them live there too. It's not like right. you can see any of the artists like live here. So like Snow Patrol. I was so oh, into Snow them Patrol. Them you know. Yeah. And yeah, so I really I was really excited about listening and it, again, feel good factor because those years when I was in the UK were so fun and I had like amazing friends of mine that record like the first time I ever heard uh, processed beats by Kasabian was through my flatmate's wall. He was playing it and then I literally like stuck my ears <laughs> against the wall and I was like, This song is amazing. How have I not heard these sounds before? That is your Spotify. <laughs> yeah, it was he was my Spotify. And then there was a club in Cheltenham where I lived called the Fez Club. And Fez was where all of us like weird media people would sort of go to. Weird and media yeah, people is like, we yeah. are all weird, man. Mm. Because there's another club called Moda which all like the sports campus guys would go to and I was like oh it's like cheesy commercial crap so we used to go to all like the cool club and yeah man and that's in why in your said, head in my no in <laughs> at least uh, that campus uh, media fagana campus said it was like that only but yeah I had a really good so my, my British collection of songs is like what I went back to it was totally feel good for me so um, that was IVM Likes I'd like to thank Peter for coming on especially it was my a very pleasure. last minute thank thing you for me. and also Naveen uh, for being here on the show and uh, just to give you our recommendations for what we like here at IVM Peter recommended The Night Manager the TV show Naveen recommended The Adventures of Priscilla Queen of the Desert Smooth man yes. Smooth And I recommended a book by Summit Sony called All the World's a Spittoon If you want to check out the episode it will be out on Monday uh, this coming Monday and uh, on uh, our IVM podcast app and any other podcasting app that you want to check out um, Thanks guys Bye. Lot of fun and waltzing. Let's do that. Waltzing, yeah. Let's do that uh, now. Uh, 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 uh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Sorry to say, but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun. As you can see, there's death, destruction, and chaos taking place all around us. But don't you worry. Food and drinks will be served shortly, and I would recommend checking out IVM Podcasts.
to catch some of your favorite Indian podcasts. We'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over. Thank you.